because we need to make sure we're live streaming from separate places but we are all together um, in the church building which is lovely which means we can play together we can uh, we can do it we tried this on Wednesday it worked okay so we're feeling hopeful that it's going to work okay today too 
hopefully and hopefully Richard will be with us too. Yes, Richard's disappeared. But uh, Richard Morris is going to lead our prayers um, this today, as long as he comes back. Don't know where he's gone. Uh, a few notices before we start. Uh, don't forget, all through June, you'll have just seen it on the on the looping adverts. All through June, is it's open heaven in Coventry. It's this initiative where people are encouraged to pray as they walk um, around our local streets, around our city. Uh, if you there is an app, you can go onto the openheaven.org website, and there's an app you can download. You can claim streets. Most of the streets, if I'm honest, look like they've been claimed already. I don't think that matters at all. Um, you know, claim your route and pray anyway. Pray as you go for your exercise during the day, pray as you drive around, as you drive to work. Um, you know, let's really lift this whole city up to the Lord in these, uh, in these strange times. Um, you, we talked about the fact that there's an announcement, in fact the announcement had changed again after Wednesday, about the fact that the church spaces, uh, places of worship are going to be allowed to open for private prayer. Now actually it was meant to be tomorrow, it ended up being yesterday. Um, as you'll have seen, uh, we haven't opened for private prayer yet. We're trying to make sure we can do that in a safe and careful way as we can. So that anybody who wants to use this space can do so confident that there's going to be no problem. Uh, we're meeting this afternoon, a little group of us, to make sure that our plans are kind of progressing on that. Um, it's not gonna be open tomorrow. Please don't come thinking you should, you'll be able to pray. Uh, in the building tomorrow. Uh, we, we won't be open tomorrow but hopefully by the end of this week we will be uh, announcing when we are and we'll be able to open safely for you. Um, do just keep an eye on Facebook, keep an eye on our website and we will let you know as soon as we know what's, uh, what the plans are definitely going to be. Um, next Sunday, very excitingly, uh, it should have been a parade service. Had we all been together and able to meet for public worship, we'd have had our uniformed organisations who meet in our buildings um, coming to join us for a parade service for Father's Day. Uh, now, obviously we can't all meet together physically, however, I'm really delighted to say that the uniformed organisations have been amazing and they are beavering away uh, working on uh, contributions uh, on film. So do join us to see an online parade service. Who knew there could be such a thing until these times? Um, we're really delighted that so many of the groups have been keen to get involved. Um, so yeah, do come and join us 11 o'clock as normal on Facebook Live next Sunday for a Father's Day service. Finally, don't forget, uh, we'll do our Zoom coffee afterwards. I will endeavour to make sure I don't end, end the meeting for everybody, which I managed to do a couple of weeks ago. Um, we will be meeting as normal on Zoom. If you haven't got the code, just get in touch with us uh, through Facebook and, uh, and we'll make sure that gets to you. Anyway, let's uh, still our hearts now, shall we, as we prepare to worship, to pray together, from wherever we are, we're still a church, we're still together, we're still God's church in this community. Uh, and as we join our prayers together, as we join our worship together, as we hear God's word together this morning, there's a power in that. The Spirit will work through that. So let's just join ourselves together in our hearts, if not physically. And let's pray. God of our days and our years, we set this time apart for you. Form us more and more into the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing, uh, what, as you'll hear in our reading a little bit later, we talk about Jesus as the cornerstone. Uh, and so that's the song we're going to start with, is Cornerstone.
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in Him be found, dressed in His righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord God, you are Lord of all. We declare that now in our church here, in our homes, in our community, in our city, in our nation. You are Lord, and we love you. We love you.
Father God, thank you for the cross. Thank you for all that that means for us, means to us. Thank you that by that cross we can come to you, that we are yours. Thank you, Lord. And because of that cross, we know we can come to Jesus. We know we can um, be forgiven for what we've done. But it takes us coming to him. So we're going to have a time of confession now, where we say sorry to God for all that we've done this week that we know has not been quite right, that's perhaps pushed us further away from him. So let's use these words on the screen. Almighty God, our Father, we come to you with sad hearts to tell you that we have done wrong things and to ask your forgiveness. For wanting to live our lives our own way. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. For not doing as we are told. Lord, we're sorry. Forgive us. For not sharing our things, Lord, we're sorry, forgive us. For not telling the truth, Lord, we're sorry, forgive us. For being jealous or cruel, Lord, we're sorry, forgive us. Father, we have often done wrong and we ask you to forgive us. Help us to live our lives in such a way that others may see your glory in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the amazing thing is that as we run to the Father, saying sorry, he opens his arms and gathers us into himself. So let's hear these words. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his spirit and raise us to new life. In Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to hear a story. It's story time. That bit doesn't change ever. So let's hear a story from Sandra. start again. So much had happened for Peter and John and for all the other disciples since the Holy Spirit had come. It had been so exciting seeing the Holy Spirit at work and being a part of it all themselves. They really missed Jesus but at the same time because of the Holy Spirit it still felt like Jesus was close by. Peter and John had been arrested after they'd healed the man who couldn't walk. Do you remember that story from last week? Well, most people were just really happy that the man had been healed and could walk now. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, they were not happy in the least. And so they had Peter and John arrested. And they were to be tried like in a court the very next day. They had to spend the night under arrest, a bit like being in prison. Now I wonder if Peter and John chatted together about amazing times with Jesus whilst they were waiting. You see now, now that Jesus had died and risen again and they fully understood exactly who Jesus was now, everything that Jesus had done just all made sense. But at the time, Peter had found things so hard to understand. I wonder if they had a conversation a bit like this. 
Do you remember that day, John, when we were all by Lake Galilee with Jesus? It was evening time and Jesus said, let's all go across in the fishing boats to the other side of the lake. So we did and Jesus fell asleep. It had been a really long day. And then when we were about halfway across Lake Galilee, one of those storms that come from nowhere just suddenly blew up. It, it was probably the worst storm that I've ever known as a fisherman. Do you remember that, John? Honestly, I thought we were going to die. The waves were so big and the water was flooding into the boats. We needed rescuing and fast. But we couldn't understand how Jesus could still be sound asleep. So we woke him up. Jesus, wake up, we're going to drown. Aren't you worried? Aren't you scared? Jesus stood up, looked around him, calm as anything, and he spoke loudly to the storm, do you remember? To the wind and the waves, and he said, quiet, be still. And immediately the wind, it just stopped. And suddenly everything was completely calm again. Jesus had rescued us from that storm just by saying a few words. And then maybe Peter laughed as he said, you know, John, at the time and in that moment, I was so amazed at what had happened. I remember saying to you, who is this? Who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? But now I know, now I understand of course he can calm the storm. He's God's son. He's all powerful. And he has all the power to save us all from any storm. Peter and John knew that Jesus was right there with them in the prison cell that night by the Holy Spirit. And they really weren't scared. They knew that everything would be okay. After all, the very name of Jesus was and is powerful. The end. Thank you so much. We're going to hear from Acts as part of our, it's the second of our series on this new normal, what that meant for the early church and sort of learning what we might learn from that. Um, so we are in Acts 4. I'm going to see if I can push myself into the picture. There we go. And we're in Acts 4, uh, and it's verses 5 to 22. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, by what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realised that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with these men? 
they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in his name. Then they called them again, in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes? To listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Matt's going to bring our word today. Morning. Good to see you. Well, good to know you're out there <laughs> at this time. And we're just thinking about this bash today. So let's pray together. Father God, by your spirit, please speak to our hearts and to our minds. Help us to see Jesus this day in his glorious and precious name. Amen. Hopefully you can hear me now. Um, in the past, I've had some really great conversations with people who are thinking about faith. You know, the sort of questions that people ask. There are all sorts of questions. And Alpha, as we're doing at the moment online, uh, loving Alpha. If any of the Alpha guys are watching, we're having such a great time talking with you about faith. Um, it's a place where you can openly ask the kind of questions that you want to ask about faith. But one thing I often hear is this. They say this. I want to look at things objectively. I want to look at things objectively, which, you know, is a fair comment. However, the reality is, I wonder, in all honesty, is that possible for any of us to do? To look completely objectively at something. Because we all have our own biases, don't we? We have our own uh, prejudices, uh, conscious or, or unconscious. We all have our own unique worldview, the way we view the world, the glasses that we put on to view the world. And in recent days, many of us have been challenged to look again within ourselves at our own privilege, at our own situation for the recent death of George Floyd. Have we missed something important? Have we been wearing our own worldview spectacles and not seen something? And the answer, I believe, yes. Well, so whatever our background is, our preoccupations or our privilege, they all form the lens in which we see the world. And right at the heart of the passage today, Peter is challenging our world views. He encourages us to re-see the world in a new way, to know it in a different way. And by knowing it in a different way, everything will be transformed by that. So right at the heart of this passage is this idea of re-seeing the world. Now this is, uh, I guess, Episode three in our, our three uh, in our series of a new normal. Episode one was uh, Pentecost. Last week we looked at Peter and John and the healing of the man uh, at the temple gate. And now in this episode there's a follow-on straight on afterwards where they're both arrested and they're they're brought out before the authorities about that same healing. You think people would be happy about someone being healed, but the authorities certainly were not. And I think if you noticed and you listened to the passage, you probably heard all these names being read out. That's because they were the rich and they were the famous and they were the learned in Jerusalem at that time. That's why their names are mentioned. And the tradition of the day, those people would have sat in a semicircle. Can you imagine that? A semicircle with Peter and John at the centre. It's worse than a 
um, an edition of uh, Dragon's Den or something like that. They're all watching them, surrounded as well by a, a bigger entourage of people focusing in on these two people. What were these two insignificant fishermen actually going to say that day? What were they going to so, say? But the truth is, it was the authorities that were running scared. It wasn't Peter and John. Because they thought, Peter and John, uh, the authorities thought they were the ones that held the power. They knew what Peter and John had been saying about Jesus. They'd heard it. And they'd heard the proclamation of resurrection of the dead. And they knew that the city knew it. Because the city was in uproar at the time. But they wanted to bring them in, sit them down or stand them up whilst they sat down. And say this to them. By what power... Or what name did you do this? There is more than a whiff of how dare you do this in this place. How dare you challenge our authority? Who do you think you are? Then know this, Jesus is with you. That's what we find out in this first part. Then know this, Jesus is with you. Peter, Peter doesn't say, uh, well, um, uh, so, uh, so he isn't lost for words. Remember, this is a fisherman. He is not lost for words. Suddenly, suddenly, this uneducated fisherman is ready for the challenge. In fact, Jesus foretells of this very moment in the Gospels earlier on. In fact, in Luke it says this, he says this, you will be brought before kings and governors all on account of my name and so you'll bear testimony to me. You make up your mind not to worry beforehand how you defend yourself for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. So this is no longer Jesus' words. This is not a dry run. This is it actually happening. This is it actually happening. Peter is filled with the Holy Spirit. He is filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is with you. That's what we're thinking about. He is filled with the Holy Spirit. Of course, the Spirit was with him on the day of Pentecost. But here we see Peter supercharged by the Spirit. When Peter needed him the most, Jesus was there for him by his Spirit filling him and equipping him. And he is overwhelmed not by fear, but he's overwhelmed with faith that Jesus is giving him by the Holy Spirit. And that can be true for us today. Because let's be honest, we are feeling a bit overwhelmed, aren't we? Right now, we can reach out to Jesus and ask, her, ask him to be with us in this special way. Fill us. It's easy to feel sadness and loss and discouragement. Friends, I felt that this week. Without a doubt, speak to Sandra, speak to Abby. I've struggled this week. I don't mind admitting that. But I need to choose just as you need to choose, Jesus, to know that he is with you right now. In whatever your situation is, he promises to be with you. Now, he may not call you to stand up in front of the authorities and speak, but he may just call you to stand up and speak to your partner or your best friend about who Jesus is. That's what we're called to do. Then Peter says this, then and know this. In other words, what he's saying is this. If you understand all this stuff that I'm about to tell you, your worldview is going to completely and utterly change. Then know this. Jesus will and can rescue you. He's standing next to the man who has been healed in the name of Jesus. They knew he'd been healed. They'd known him for 40 years. There was no mistaking it. He was healed. 
Peter retells what's happened for them over the last three years in their time with Jesus. He talks about what's happened over the last two months. Uh, there were the authorities who rejected Jesus. They were the very ones who sent him to the cross, in whose name this man, standing in front of them right now, is healed. The truth is, the one they rejected is the one they needed the most to rescue them. Then Peter says this statement, as bold then as it is today. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. There are many words on there, I think, that we think can save us. And I'm sure in this time we have learnt those names are hollow and meaningless. The right car, the right badge, the right shoes, those names that we think can make us feel better. Money, success, beauty, sex, whatever it is. All those things we thought were the names of the things that can give us rescue. We've discovered they aren't. They're hollow in the wrong hands, they're demeaning. Jesus' name is the name that saves. His name is the one that rescues. Because that's what salvation and saves means. Some versions have actually changed this to say, to be rescued by Jesus. His name is the one that rescues us. You may be wondering to yourself, what am I being rescued from? For those who know, Je know Jesus, understand that they're being rescued from their past life. They're being rescued from the stuff they did yesterday, from the consequences of the stuff they have done in their lives, the bad things they've done, all those things. We need rescue. And Jesus is the one who brings rescue. Because we need to be saved from the verdict that's placed on the bad things that we have done. True justice is not about... We often think justice in a negative way. We always think of justice of kind of, let's be judge someone, you know, let's put them down. But actually, very much in the New Testament, justice is about setting things right. Setting things right being rescued. Jesus declared us in the right because of what he did on the cross for us and he rescues us from the consequences of our actions. And Peter and John had healed a man who couldn't walk and they were showing in the present what God is going to do at the end of all things when he puts all things right, when he settles all debts once and for all. And Peter and John were just showing, as well as healing a man, the reality of that in the present. And I do wonder, thinking about all these things, when we leave lockdown, and I'm sure lots of people you've heard thinking about this, musing on this on the news, whether or not these questions of life we've begun to think about over these th last three months, for those who've sensed they've got some answers, maybe it's gone deep with them, for people who don't know the answer are struggling right now. They're looking again at all the questions, all the questions of life. It seems that within this difficulty... And this heartache, God is giving us an opportunity to be with him, to stand close to him. There is no other name by which we'll be saved. There is no other name, but the council said, well, Jesus' name is not the way we look at the world. It doesn't fit our worldview. So they did what many people, it doesn't fit my worldview. I don't want to look at the world like that. So they bury the name of Jesus. They use it as a swear word. They forget about it because it doesn't fit the way they want to see the world and they don't realise that he is the one that saves and rescues them. And neither did the authorities, even though right next to them is the man who has just been healed. This is wonderful verse, my favourite verse of the whole passage. It says this, But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. 
There was nothing they could say. There was the man. All, all, all of it was proved right in front of them, and yet they didn't want it because it didn't work with the way they wanted the world to be. A truth was blindingly obvious. The name of Jesus is the rescuer. It's healed this man, and we all need that help. We all need that help. And right now, perhaps where you are, you sense you need rescue. Ask God today to draw close to you, to bring rescue. Next thing to say, Jesus will change you. He will change you. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realised that they were unschooled ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. What had changed these unschooled ordinary men that had been with Jesus? They had spent time with him. They had listened to him. They'd been taught by him. Their worldview had changed. They had changed. They had been with Jesus. I could give you plenty of stories of lives changed by Jesus, but there's nothing like finding out for yourself how for your life can be changed. It's not like an overnight A to B, everything's sorted. It is a journey. There's no question about that. But he is the one who can bring freedom, life and eternity into each of us. Peter and John have spent time with Jesus. Let's, let's time. Let's use this time to spend time with Jesus. Maybe so far you haven't done that. Well, we're going to be open for soon for private prayer. Maybe you can come in here. But even wherever you are, wherever you are, Jesus can be with you and close by. But they didn't like it, so they had an idea. They thought they'd do this. This is my paraphrase. We, we, they'd had this idea. They said, well, let's ask them not to talk about it anymore. You know, because although we know the guy's here and he's healed, let's just say, well, I'll tell you what, let's not, let's say, just don't talk about it anymore and it'll be sorted. Well, I don't think that worked. We're still here. The church is still here. But that was their idea. So they said this. They went back, as they might paraphrase. We know that you helped this man in the name of Jesus. After all, he is here before us. You've spent time with Jesus and the experience has obviously changed you for the better. However, please don't tell anybody. Well, that hasn't happened, as I say. We are still here worshipping God. And Peter makes it really clear. He says, as for us, we cannot help speaking about the one we have seen and heard. The authorities didn't know what was good about the good news. These two unschooled, ordinary men did. Only months ago, hiding in an upper room, now in front of the authorities, telling them, about the goodness. They had this new vision. They had, then know this. It had changed the way they thought about the world. They couldn't stop talking about Jesus because they knew him and they'd spent time with him. They wanted to share that with their friends. Is that our experience? Have we, you know, I've taken off the glasses of faith and we put on the glasses of, I don't know, disbelief or despair or feeling overcome? Put on the glasses of faith. See the world through Jesus and his eyes. And then tell the story. Let's choose to see the world in a new way. Peter and John knew that Jesus was with them, that they were rescued and saved, and they'd been changed forever by the experience. How do we know that for ourselves? How do you know it? Ask God this day to renew that truth in you. Allow the Holy Spirit to fill you for the first or maybe for the 31st time. And once again, embrace those promises. Just as Peter and John, hearts were set on fire by them. That we cannot help. That we cannot help and we cannot stop from telling people about everything that Jesus has done in our lives because we spent time with him, because we know him. And that many others, many others will come to know King Jesus for themselves.
and have a future that is secure in him. I pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to sing as, as a response to that, using a song that's new to us. We've sung it, I think, once or twice since we've been in lockdown. But um, the words are pretty much what we've just heard. You know, his name is glorious. His name is lifted up on high. And there is no other name by which we can be saved. So we're going to... His name is Jesus. He is the one in whom we trust. By whose name we are saved. 
He is the one we believe in. And we're going to say those words of belief together now. Those words will come up on the screen. Do join me as we say the creed. We believe in God who made the world and loves it. We believe that he came to the world in the person of Jesus who was both God and man and who died on the cross so that we could be friends with God. We believe that Jesus rose from death and gives life to all who trust him. We believe that Jesus will come back and that everyone who trusts him will live with God forever. We believe in the Holy Spirit who lives in us and helps us to live as God wants. We believe in the church, people who live for God in this world. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Richard, who's going to lead us in a time of prayer. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Hear us, Lord, as we cry out to you. Father, we pray that you will guide and direct our government to enable them to see the necessity for places of worship to be allowed to open so that we can come together as the body of Christ to worship you and provide comfort and support to one another. Father, give wisdom to our government that they will seek to make decisions that will enable our country to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic and seek every opportunity to reduce and eliminate the vast inequalities of health, wealth and opportunity that blight our country and our world. Lord Jesus, we seek your help so that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Thank you that over the last two months we have had opportunities to meet with neighbours we've never or rarely spoken with. Jesus, please continue to open doors so that we will have more opportunities and the courage to speak to them about you. We thank you, Lord, that many people have connected with St Martin's through Facebook. Please give us wisdom, strength and resources so we can continue to reach out to people who are unable to come to our services. And we are so grateful for all that Matt and Abby and Sandra and others have done to take church into Finham. We pray for the schools in our parish. Give wisdom and resources to the staff at the schools so they can safely reopen them and help children get back in order to return to learning and to renew their friendships. We pray for those in need of healing, for John Bint, for myself, my wife Tish, for Andy, Anne Goff, Jill's parents, Pam Worsley, Gail and Trevor Brick Brigden, Bill Warren, Roger Gillett, Jack Holes, Greg Smith, Nick, Nick Williams, Alan Simpson, Elizabeth Kerr, Heather Blackmore and Helen Walker. And we pray with, um, for those who mourn the death of Mark Elton and Angela. We will praise you, Lord, among the nations. We will sing of you among the peoples. Help us, help me to share Jesus with the people we meet. Protect us from fear. Amen. Thank you for your prayers, Richard. And a prayer for today, the collect for today. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in ways of wisdom that we may find true life in Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. And let's say together the words that Jesus taught us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not in tempt into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We're going to come draw towards the end of our worship now with a, a final song, um, which speaks of that grace that Jesus has revealed to us. Uh, amazing grace. join us for coffee on zoom afterwards uh, as i say if you haven't got the code just comment and we'll we'll get that to you but for the time being here's a blessing that we've been using during lockdown that we'll continue to use until we all can come safely through our doors may the peace of the lord christ go with us wherever he may send us may he guide us through the wilderness protect us through the storm May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we finish our service as is traditional at St Martin's with the grace and we say that together. The grace, grace of, of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the Lord love of God, God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. And we'll see you Wednesday uh, and, uh, and ready for Father's Day next Sunday. your love